Hello everyone, in this video we will solve guided practice problem number 4 of your module number 7 about applications of Newton's laws of motion. Let's read. Determine the amount of tension force present on the strings if a 200 kg box is being hanged on both of its corners, making an angle of 65 degrees on one end while the other end is attached to the wall horizontally. Let's illustrate the problem. So this will be the illustration. Again, we have here one string is attached to the ceiling, of course, hanged. That makes 65 degrees. And then the other one is attached to the wall horizontally. Okay. You can have also another, like, another illustration that could look like the opposite of this. See, for example, you can have here also this box. Okay. Especially that it is not, um, you can have this as well. Especially that it's not specified on which side. But anyway, we can get the same value if your um, illustration and the FBD is labeled properly. Okay? Okay, let's use this one. Okay. So, the next thing you have to do is to draw the free body diagram of that. Of course, it will just use the forces. Okay. Uh, this one makes 65 degrees. Okay, so that will be our um, tension. And then, we have here one that is drawn horizontally. Okay. Oops, that should be straight there oops there okay okay and then of course there is the weight of the object okay so for the weight it's directed downward to the center you can see that in free body diagram they should be meeting at one point okay and next is for us to find the amount of the forces okay in labeling so let's label this as tension one and then this is your tension 2. And then this is the weight. Okay. Again, this is T1 and T2. So that later on, you know which tension are you pertaining to. Okay. As you can see for T1, there is no other component other than this X component. Because it lies on the X, the X component. X axis rather. And then this lies on the Y axis axis so this is the y component but for t2 we can draw here the components of this because there's an angle let's draw an imaginary lines okay this makes 65 degrees still 65 degrees so this will be the component so we have here t2 oops that should be t2 sub x because this is on the x component and then we have here t 2 sub y okay so the next thing that we are going to do is to write all the components components okay here if you would follow gresa it's still okay okay in writing the gresa so let's move this first okay let's write gresa so that you know that you can still apply grass here mass is equal to 120 kilograms okay and we have your theta equal to 65 degrees if we have two um angles you can name the other one as so for example angle phi angle alpha angle beta okay so here we usually use angle theta and the other one of course there is no angle so we can have here angle alpha equal to zero degrees but anyway we'll be writing the components directly so it's just fine okay again so this is components so let's just type it components okay so let's have first the x components okay so for your x component, of course, we have here the t sub 1 sub x, okay? And then we have t2 
sub x. Okay, so we have here for our t1 sub x, it is equal to t1 cosine of 0 degrees. Cosine of 0. Okay. But this makes a negative, this has a negative value because it's towards west. If you will look into the um, angle that I'm using, I used 0 degrees instead of instead of 180 degrees. Why? Because we'll be using here acute angles. Okay? And in using acute angles, then you have to determine the direction. Okay? Again, use 0 degrees instead of 180 degrees. Okay, for T2 sub X, you will have here, of course, the T2. Oh, this should be D1. T2 cosine of 65 degrees. Okay, and then for the Y component, okay, let's have Y component. Okay, for the Y component, we have here the next one. That's T1 sub Y, T2 sub Y, and then we have here the weight. Okay, so for T1 sub Y, it's just, you can see that there is no T1 sub Y here, but we can write here T1 sub Y sine of 0 degrees, because sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0, so it's still 0, okay? For T2 sub y, we have here T2 multiplied by the sine of 65 degrees. Okay, this is positive because it's towards north. And for the weight, it is directed downward. So this is a negative mg. Okay, we're able to follow. Okay, next, let's write the conditions for equilibrium. So remember that the condition for equilibrium. Okay. This will help us um, solve the problem, of course. The condition for equilibrium is the summation of forces is equal to zero. Therefore, the summation of forces along the x-axis is equal to zero. The same with the summation of forces along the y-axis is equal to zero. So now let's have first the summation of forces along the x-axis. So this means that we'll just add all the x components okay so here for the summation of forces along the x we have here t1 which will be t1 t1 sub x plus t2 sub x is equal to zero next substitute the values okay for our t1 we have negative t sub 1 cosine of 0 plus T2 cosine of 65. This is equal to 0. Then we add T1 cosine theta on both sides. So we will have here T2 cosine of 65 equal to T1 cosine of 0. T1 cosine of 0. Okay, that should be T1 cosine of 0. Let's use here cosine of zero then let us divide both sides by cosine of 65 cosine of 65 so we can cancel this out therefore t2 is now equal to t1 cosine of zero over cosine of 65 then let's just leave it here and next let's find the summation of forces along the y-axis okay or the summation of the y component so for the forces along the y we have here t1 sub y plus t2 sub y plus the weight is equal to zero okay so t1 is t1 sine of 0 plus 
32 sine of 65 minus m times g equal to 0 because it's negative. Okay? Again, then we can add mg on both sides of the equation or, or just let's, let's post this. This will be m times g. And then we have here t sub 1 sine of 0 plus g plus t2 sine of 65 degrees. Okay, the next thing you have to do is to substitute the equation you got here. Again, this one, this is t2, substitute here so that we can have only one variable. Okay, and it will be easier for us to solve if we have only one variable. So, let's substitute here. So, we'll have here t1 sine of 0, but that actually t1 sine of 0 is equal to 0. So, we can cancel that out. So, this will be, okay, plus, again, the one that we will be substituting is this. So, that will be T1 cosine of 0 over cosine of 65 multiplied by sine of 65, okay, is equal to mg. See? Here, we can, actually, we can substitute here the value of mg. Okay, so we have here mass is equal to 120 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 meter per second square. Okay, so here, let's just simplify this one. Okay. Okay, let's solve. Let's have the sine of zero is equal to zero. That's why we cancel this out. Okay, so let's try to solve this one. The next one is of course, cosine of 0 multiplied by sine of 65 over cosine of 65. And this will give us 2.1445. Let's use two decim um, four decimal places so that there will be a little discrepancy. Okay, we'll avoid um, a greater uncertainty. Okay, so that's T1. Multiplied by the answer to that is 2.1445. Okay, and the weight will be okay for the weight that's 120. Oops, that's 120 multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. And this is 1176 newtons okay so next divide both sides by 2.1445 2.1445 okay so that we can cancel this out and this will be equal to let's see that will be 100 1,170 divided by 2.1445. That is 548 point. So let's write P1 equal to 548.3795 Newton. Why am I asking for four decimal places? Because in solving this, there are a lot of uh, th there can be a lot of discrepancy or uncertainties so it's good that you show four decimal places so that we can still verify if it's precise or close to the correct answer so but then your final answer must be expressed in two decimal places so that will be 548.38 newton okay so let's box this but we're not yet done Okay, so this is only the T1. We still have to solve for T2. Okay, for T2, we'll be going back to the equation that we have here so that we can just use that. Okay, so let's just copy this one and then we can paste it here. Okay, here for you to solve T2, Again, you have to substitute here. Okay, your answer. 
Let's substitute P1 because we're able to solve for P1 already. Okay. Substitute that will be okay 548.38 newton multiplied by cosine 0 all over cosine 65. And this will give us, let's see, okay, that will be 548.38 cosine of 0 over cosine of 65. And this is equal to 1,297.5776 Newton. And then express your answer in two decimal places. That will be 1,297.58 Newton. Okay, and that is your P2. Okay, so... That's it.